Hi, I'm the Old Timey Movie Reviewer, and today's movie is called Devil's Partner, which implies it's about the partner of the devil. But I don't know who that could be in reference to. Is the devil married? Is he part of a law firm? Who knows? Well, let's watch the movie and maybe we'll find out about the Devil's Partner. So the movie starts off as an old man named Pete Jensen is summoning the devil to sell him his soul. Um, that pentagram has six sides. So he's going to summon the devil with a hexagon. Huh, okay. He's going to use a hexagon to summon Satan. Wait, that's not the devil. That's Jeezer Hora. He's selling his soul to Jeezer Hora? Who the fuck is Jeezer Hora? Wait, hold on a second. Hey, well, hello there. Do you have a goat I could buy? Well, I got me a goat I could give you. For how much? You got a purdy mouth there, boy. What? Oh, fuck this. I take your goat. I take it away. Well, that was a bust. Hello. Ah! Um, are you? Jeezer Hore? Yes, I am. So, do you offer deals like the devil? Yes, in fact, I am the devil. Jeezer Hore is just an alias I used in this movie to see how many people would try to contact me after watching this movie. No, you're not the devil. Oh, and why do you think that? Uh, because the devil would be too busy to stop by and be in one of my videos. Plus, he'd have the boss to use his own name in the movie. And you're obviously just me with a paper mustache and beard taped to your face. But I'm not you. I just take on the appearance of whoever I'm talking to. And the mustache and beard? Your face is boring. I decided to spice it up. I was also thinking of adding a paper mullet to it. Ah, oh, hell no! What do you think? Oh, no. So anyway, do you work for the devil? No, I work with him. So your partners? Yes. Oh, so that's why the movie's called Devil's Partner. Well, thanks for filling me in. Bye. Don't you want to sell your soul? <laughs> no? You want to sell me your soul? Ha, huh. no. You'll probably try and trick me. Oh, I get it. You know that I'll trick you. We demons have no secrets anymore. You know, there was a time that people actually thought we demons would be trustworthy and- GO AWAY! Okay. So old man Pete Jensen sells his soul to Jeezer Hore for two years of life as young Nick Richards. And what does he do with it? He becomes a gas station attendant. Wow. He had big ambitions in life. Oh! Oh! I'm- I'm dying! Oh, to be young again, and work at a gas station. Gee, I wish I worked at a gas station. I can make that come true. It was sarcasm, dumbass. Oh. So now Nick Richards pumps gas and lives in the same old shack he did as Pete Jensen. We had a bargain on your soul to improve your life. Gee, good thing he was never on Wall Street. And also, he tries to win over a girl named Nell Lucas, who used to let milk his goat when he was an old man. So instead of trying to win Nell over with kindness, he attempts to win her over with blandness. And, because the movie wouldn't have it any other way, he also attempts to win her over by taking out his competition. First, he poisons the goat milk so it kills the old and firm man Nell brings it to, because I guess he's afraid she'd rather have him. Then Nick possesses Nell's boyfriend David's dog Prince and attacks David. The dog doesn't bite his face, as you can see. His face is fine. Oh, now he's got the dog by the throat and is keeping its mouth away from his face. That's good. And now he's hitting the dog with a decorative item. And still the dog is away from his face. Too bad, Nick Richards. Better luck next time. You failed to hurt... What the heck? How'd that happen? Did the dog have telekinetic powers or something? Jeez, or Jorge. Yes. How'd that happen? The dog never gets close enough to his face. The editor works for me. Hmm. 
Well, now David's face is disfigured, and it starts to wane on his relationship with Nell. But then David decides to get plastic surgery. So as the plastic surgeon heads into town to help David, he crashes into a cow and dies. <laughs> I ain't making that up, folks. I couldn't. It's just too silly. Now I gotta ask, what's up with the animal motif in these murders? Is Nick Richards a satanic version of Dr. Robotnik? Or is he some sort of animal-themed Batman villain? This has all been very moving, Batman. But I go to say, or I know you can't stop me. Anyway, at this point, the town sheriff and doctor are shocked and confused by these attacks and don't know how to respond to the situation. Seems obvious to me. Start questioning people. There's only a few people it could be. The Beastmaster, Dr. Doolittle, or the Devil. Or me. Or Jeezer Hore. Take your pick. At least go interview someone. So then Nick chats with a hobo named Papers and invites him over to his place the next night. And why does Nick invite the hobo over to his place? To kill him. Why? I guess he's using his competition to get now. Focus on her boyfriend! So that night at Nick's shack, Nick shows Papers that he's actually Pete and then he gets ready to kill him. And now let's play what weapon will he use to kill a hobo? A. A knife. B. A gun. C. A log. D. An animal. If you didn't guess D, you give him far too much credit. Now on to round two. What animal is best to kill a hobo? A. A dolphin. B. A griffin. C. A leopard. D. A horse. Answer. D. A horse. I'd have used a gun. The next day, some kids come across the body. So the cops are called, and the father of the kids fills in the cops about the discovery of the body. The sheriff and doctor then discover a message in the ground. Apparently, while being kicked to death by a horse, the hobo wrote a message in the sand saying that Pete is rich. Which at first the sheriff and doctor assume is because Pete had money, and not that Pete is Nick Richards. Why didn't papers just write Pete is Nick? Why try to go to all the trouble of writing Pete is Richard? It's going to take longer. And he was being stamped to death by a horse. Did he not realize time was of the essence? So now Nick, wanting David dead, goes after him as a snake. Dude, use a gun! It's the simpler way. What's Nick? Are you going to go all Mario on his ass, throwing turtle shells? Use a gun. See? It works against you. Why? Because it's effective. So as plot convenience would have it, the others show up looking for Nick and not finding him there. They follow the blood from the rattlesnake, because now they assume... Nick Richards seems to have a tremendous power. Yep. They jump past the thought that he was using animals as a weapon, like putting a cow on the road or putting a rattlesnake in a rival's window, and have come to the conclusion that he has power over animals. A conclusion to come to. But Otter still it's accurate. They took the long shot and won. They all end up at Nick's shack, where Nick makes a desperate attempt to escape as a horse, and is quickly shot dead. So have you learned your lesson now, Nick? If you want someone dead, use a gun. Not an animal, a gun. Guns are way more effective, as you can tell, because now you're dead. So the movie's over, and oh yeah, the scarred boyfriend's face miraculously heals. Why? Because the movie wouldn't want the main girl to have to have a disfigured boyfriend. So that's that. Now go. No. Hmm. What do I do? I've got an idea. Get him to climb into a tree? Nah, that's stupid. Challenge him to a fiddling contest. Nah, that's dumb. Wait. I could use this book as a bludgeoning weapon. Nah, nah, that's stupid. Ah, here's something. Get him to say his name backwards. What is Jesus Horror backwards? Aurora Aurora Rejets? Um what's the word Aurora Rejets mean? Aurora Rejets? Ha! You said your name backwards. Now you have to go. Nope. Me literally saying my name backwards doesn't do it. It's saying the phrase his name backwards that does oh crap <laughs> I flipped out on that one if that hadn't worked I'd have had to throw this cat at him <laughs> <laughs>